Bigger triangle is John. He's dating a girl called Clara. There's Clara. Looks like they're they're arguing. There's an argument. Triangles are still fighting. Marital issues. Hold up, what the heck is going on here? I mean, you're probably wondering, what are these people talking about? I mean, all I see on screen are some random shapes and lines. Where are the names and backstories coming from? How are they finding meaning and creating story out of something so basic? It's just a jealous feud between the two, and then the ball is deciding that I don't want either thing to do with them. Now, the shapes they see on screen are just that. Random shapes. There is no inherent meaning in them, but we as humans are so hardwired for story, we organize the chaos and create meaning. We create a story. In today's world, being a storyteller, it's table stakes. And if you want to do passion-filled work that changes the world around you and fills you with purpose, well, that's not going to be enough. You, my friend, are going to have to become remarkable. Okay, so each episode is gonna open with a riddle or an experiment that's gonna challenge you and exemplify the idea that we're gonna dive into for that episode. We're gonna start by inviting a small group of participants to join us in the studio, where we're gonna challenge them with solving or taking on this psychological experiment. But then we're gonna use their approaches, their failure and their successes to frame these mindsets and how that's gonna help you become more remarkable in your work. We're gonna share real world onset in the field examples. The kind of shit you don't normally get to hear about. I mean, if this is your jam, sweet, because it's ours too. But I think that maybe we should start at the beginning, how it was that we've even arrived at this series. I actually started in weddings, and before that, psychology. I mean, I got this opportunity to film a wedding for a friend of a friend. I was so new to all of this that I bought the camera at Best Buy on the way to the wedding. How many megapixels does one person really need? That wedding led to a national commercial with Canon Camera that aired during like primetime with Grey's Anatomy and House. That's why Canon Rebel XDI. There was something so remarkable about his wedding work that one of them became a Vimeo staff pick. Another wedding gets noticed by the National Football League. I mean, there I was, I'm, I'm 37 years old and I'm sitting at my dining room table and I'm watching wedding video after wedding video of complete strangers. Today, our wedding day, I look into your eyes. I mean, it was exactly the kind of work that I aspired to making. And then we got a call from CBS, the television network, for a documentary they were thinking of doing that went on to win a bunch of Emmys. Step up to my line, not on my line, not on my line. Notice in the highest responsibility of this you have to start. Notice. And there I found myself at the time pining to do that work just to have a voice. Instead, I pursued a career in real estate and auctioneering. 15, hit a bit of 20, hit a bit of 20, five and five, hit a bit of five, hit a bit of 30. I know, right? It was paying the bills, but it certainly wasn't living the lifestyle that I wanted for my boys. And from there, clients like Apple and Four Seasons, going all the way to Geneva to speak for the United Nations, these crazy pinch me moments that don't even feel real sometimes. And it was right then that I made the decision that I was gonna rewrite my narrative, that my future would include becoming a remarkable filmmaker. And we've been able to create work that transcends. Creating remarkable stories is more than anything else about your mindset and your approach. So that's why each episode, we're going to bring you a classic riddle, a problem, and invite random strangers to figure it out. Now, in watching these strangers try and solve the riddle and how they approach the problem, it's gonna unlock insights into how you two might have approached this problem. And more than that, as we share the answers to each riddle, it's gonna become a mindset or approach that we believe is critical to becoming a remarkable storyteller. With that, let's go. Okay, this one is wild. Today we are recreating a classic experiment from 1944, Heider Simmel, where they studied apparent behavior. Now, this is from the 40s. How are you? So we've invited six random participants to join us here where we're gonna show them this motion picture. All right, and what we're gonna look at is what people see when they watch this motion picture. These random triangles and circles and lines made from photos and cardboard on glass, and how their brains then start to possibly see story, character, motives. The two triangles are fighting, I think. And there is somebody that doesn't want to be involved, and they're trying to leave. All of these elements that as storytellers, we need to be very familiar with, not only what they are, but then how to use them. We've kind of up a little bit the 1940 animation, but recreated it faithfully, and we are going to run them through that, asking them to simply explain what it is they see as they watch this motion picture. All right, I see a triangle and a rectangle. Triangle is 
moving around a circle. Big Triangle had a hard upbringing. You know, he probably comes from like Northern Florida. He is more introverted. You know, dad's trying to come in and he's talking to the kid. Oh. <laughs> now a triangle. <laughs> it's like peeking back in. The kid is still really confused. He's stuck in the middle of this whole thing. Maybe the circle thinks it's safer in there, but now that it's cornered, the small triangle is trying to coax it out. And the key here is our brain is automatically connecting random elements and creating stories out of them. So for naturally storytellers, then it can't be our aspiration to become a storyteller. Our goal, if we want to drive change, break through the noise, and truly make a difference with our work, guess what? We have to become a remarkable storyteller. But why, you may be asking, would I want to invest all this time and energy to become remarkable at this story stuff? Well, I'm gonna go out on a limb and guess that you have a few things that you really care about in this world. Causes you wanna participate in or changes you wanna see, perhaps even products or services that you wanna get out into the world. Whatever that may be, the challenge of simply shouting it into the universe is that we see some 10,000 ads every single day. Heck, try sitting across from a friend and having them actually stay present with you for like five minutes. So noise is at an all time high and trust it's at an all time low. Now, how do you break through that noise? Well, stories, as we're going to keep diving into across this series, are amazing at creating two responses in humans, attention and emotion. So how do we use what we know about the power of story to drive the change we wish to see in the world? Now, the science tells us that story is the most instinctive and powerful way for humans to interpret the world around them, even when there's nothing there to interpret. She cheated on him. This is his, like, his past catching up to him. And that there, is the roommate. So he goes out with Teresa and gets her out of harm's way and Chad's chasing him around the house. They're fighting for supremacy. It's frustrated that it didn't get what it wanted. He's running around and then he's gonna break half their house. And he breaks it and he's getting very disrupted. He's mad. And now he's just really mad. So it's destroying the thing that kept it. Story creates meaning and meaning creates or erases value. And this effect is so darn powerful, it can overcome even our most common sense judgments. I mean, this one I love. So Dan Airely once famously tested this, this beer he made. He called it the MIT brew. And he took a beer that was on campus and then he mixed it with vinegar. Now, if you're not a beer drinker, that shit don't go together too well. It does not make your beer better. But what he did was he took this new and improved MIT brew and he told us, Story, they did a taste test, and guess what? When told a story of this new and improved beer, people actually rated it as being better than the old beer, even though it was vinegar beer. Do you get how ridiculous that is? Story can overcome so much of how we think we're rational because the reality is we're far more rationalizing. One of the biggest factors that can drive our decisions is therefore, Story, my friends, a damn good story. Why on earth does the big triangle break the house? Because uh, he's lonely now, I think. I think because they all left, it's not worth it anymore. Neither of these guys know how to deal with conflict or emotion. He has an anger issue, so he's not gonna change. They expect the world to happen around them. If she really is afraid of her life, she, they call the police. Yeah, he has not found a solution to what he wants to do. These ideas we're sharing with you, that we've spent a career building, they, for you, can be a skeleton key. Because applying this idea of wanting to be remarkable through this, these mindsets is a small way it can offer big gains as well. You can really change the world. You can do some epic shit. But these ideas, they're not about being a megaphone. They're not about shouting and pushing and demanding attention. Because great storytelling, it's, it's a pull, it's not a push, and a welcome pull is where audiences are at today. This is how to become a remarkable storyteller, where each episode we'll share some wild and unusual mindsets and approaches that we believe will help you live at the intersection of excellence and the unexpected. So does this story end happy ever after? So she's just gonna maybe go off with Ted, find a better way that's more peaceful to live. Neither of them are happy. Why? Because life is suffering? I think he's gonna go and now try to find his wife and kid and hopefully try to bring some sort of peace to, to his family. Uh, sometimes a leopard don't change his spots. People don't change, but situations change. I'm sure he's smart enough to figure out other means of getting what he wants. 
I think, you know, it's gonna end in, in divorce. They're gonna go their separate ways. You're a great author, but you break my heart. <laughs> well done, Alex. Thank you. Well done. Yeah, thank you. Alrighty, if you're digging this so far, and if you share our desire to use the power of story to make a difference, then join us for all the upcoming episodes by subscribing to our channel, clicking on the notification bell, and by commenting. But we don't simply want this to be us sharing with you. No, we want you to take action with us. We want you to share your thoughts and your observations. So each episode is gonna come with a key question. This is where we wanna hear from you, and we're gonna reward the strongest comment with a $150 B&H gift card. To join in the contest, all you have to do is watch to the very end where we're gonna play the entire animation. And then you get to write in your own story, whatever you can come up with from all of these shapes. Now the person who offers the most interesting and compelling story before next Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard will be awarded the $150 B&H gift card. We can't wait to see what you come up with. Remember my friends, you're not your fucking account. Your perspective will always be the strongest lens you attach to a camera. And this show is all about helping you develop and sharpen that perspective.